Hey everybody, it's Walensias, and welcome back to The Forgotten City. I did a first look at this game back in July, and I really, really liked it, but I didn't continue because the devs had a policy of not wanting content beyond a certain story point to be created, so I held off on it, and they've since lifted the policy, so whoa, now we can continue. Do make sure to watch part one first, if you haven't, to know what's going on. If you have watched it, I still want to give you a quick recap because it's been a long time and even I forgot a lot of stuff. I had to watch my own video again to figure out what's going on. Basically, what happened in part one, the first look, is that we woke up next to a riverbank rescued by a woman named Karen and she asked me to go check out the nearby Roman ruins to find her friend. One thing led to the other and the next thing I knew, I got transported 2000 years back in time to before the Roman ruins became ruins when it was still a grand city back in its heyday. We walked around a little bit, learned that there is 22 people living here right now for about 7 months, and everybody there follows something called the Golden Rule, which says that the many shall suffer for the sins of one. Which means, if someone commits a sin, then everybody in the entire city will die by turning into a golden statue. But we have a problem because we don't actually know what the Golden Rule is. Because no one wants to test it out, because if you do and you get it right, then everyone's gonna die, right? So. People there have just sort of been living really strict lives to not accidentally trigger it. The reason that we got sent back in time is because the rule is about to be broken and I've been brought back to stop it. We know this because the magistrate of the city, a guy named Sentius, he basically activates a summoning ritual every single time the rule gets broken so that I can get summoned here to help stop the rule from getting broken in the first place. So the fact that I'm here right now inherently means that someone's about to break the rule because otherwise we wouldn't even be here to begin with. Where we left off at the end of the first look is Sentius asked me to go to the temple where I found a dead woman. She was poisoned to death and I saved her by stealing a resin, bringing it back with me in time because stealing is a sin which activates the golden rule which causes Sentius to do the ritual that lets me go back in time and I brought the resin with me to before the woman died and gave it to her so that she was cured. Yeah, that takes a little bit to wrap your head around, but essentially what we're doing is abusing the power of having this, uh, being able to go back in time so that we can try to solve this mystery. So let's continue. All right, let's go back to this clinic here. The patient is now alive and I don't believe... May Apollo keep you safe? I finished talking to you yet. Lucretia. Feeling all right? What's your story? I'm Lucretia and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. This is Nevia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. Another missing person? Navia? Tell me more about Navia. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too, until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying, but I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. Go on. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off. And I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. Is there not a door? Okay, I I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I suppose. Figure out a treatment for rheumatism. So this Navia lady definitely knows more than. Whenever we walk past the golden statues, we hear whispering. I'm assuming nobody else here hears that? Because that's what it sounds like. What do you think about the golden rule? 
A city without sin might sound good on paper, but whoever dreamt it up didn't think it through. Maybe it was an attempt to create some kind of utopia. But snakes like Decius will always find loopholes to exploit. And what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing. In some ways, we are worse off because we can't take the law into our own hands. Not so perfect after all. Yeah, Decius was the guy who was selling the resin for like a thousand denarii. Do you know a way out of here? I wish. Some people here need proper medical care, not the half-baked, hanging-by-a-thread excuse for treatment I'm giving them. Just don't get sick or injured here. I'll do my best to treat you, but I'm out of my depth and dangerously short on everything you can imagine. Well, this lady, she's stepping up to the plate, but she's at her breaking point. Yulia, I believe, is the lady we saved. Can we talk about Yulia? Sure. What do you want to know? Do you think she was poisoned or was it self-inflicted? Yeah, one of the points that came up earlier was that how did somebody manage to poison her without breaking the golden rule? Because poisoning and potentially killing somebody definitely sounds like a sin. So maybe it was self-inflicted. Do you think she was poisoned or was it self-inflicted? Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule. And so maybe it's best we don't discuss it. Let's talk about something else. Gladly. Okay, well, I'll be going now. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Thank you. Yeah, we asked this lady before, Hey, do you hear whisperings? And she said, No, I'm crazy. <sighs> Hi. I'm just gonna talk to the patient first. Hi, Yulia. Oh, it's you. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Uh, but thanks for trying to help me, I suppose. Was um. there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. That definitely sounds self-inflicted then. She might have tried to end her own life. Can I ask what happened to you? As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me. It's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please, no more questions. That sounds suspicious. I want to know how someone poisoned you without breaking the golden rule. The golden rule? <laughs> That's the least of my worries. The gods may be cruel, but Maliolus and Claudia are far crueler. Is that who poisoned you? Please, just... Leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. So Maliolus is the guy running for Magistrate, and people seem to think he's gonna win, so... Mm, maybe she knows something, and she wants to... Or Maliolus wants to kill her. Or for her to not talk about it. I can't help unless you tell me what happened. Oh, persistent as Nemesis, aren't you? I can tell you, but it's a long saga. I have all the time in the world. All right. Literally. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price, a thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. Thinking you'd be out of here before you ever had to pay back the loan? I'm not proud of it, but... Yes, I was surprised he agreed to it, to be honest. But I was so happy to have the money I didn't question it. I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured I'd be out of here so soon it wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia, and she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? Hemlock. Oh, 
No, poison, right? What's hemlock? It's a deadly poison made from a plant. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, let the buyer beware. Then she just looked at me with those cruel black eyes and she... She laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. And that's when I realized the two of them had planned the whole thing from the beginning. Why? So they could get you as a slave for 30 years? That's pretty messed up. Surely that would have broken the golden rule? That's what I said to the magistrate. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I'd signed over my labor for 30 years and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting too, but Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule, and I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths, so he locked me in his villa, confiscated everything I owned as collateral, and made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife, Claudia, was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless stream of futile, demeaning tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours, only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, you missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. <sighs> but they forgot to confiscate one thing, my hemlock. Oh, I see. I just wanted it to be over. But it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. No, you didn't mess up. But now I'm starting to wonder if I should have brought you back. Well, she just wanted to escape. I know she did it in a very messed up way, but Maliola sounds rich. He's not going to be hurting for a thousand denarii, so I don't feel that bad for him. I'm so sorry to hear that. I brought it on myself. I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met, and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. So, what'll happen to you now? When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa, and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time, I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. Sentius earlier was bragging about how, oh, we are such a great city, but this? This is clearly not a paradise. Yeah, you can't sin, but people are going through loopholes to make everyone's lives miserable. I'm sorry, can I do anything to help? I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me, for trying to escape. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. Huh. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Oh, I kind of wonder if, um, because we know now that Somebody has a thousand denarii, right? The person who was it in her story earlier. So maybe we could have gone to that person, gotten a thousand denarii, and then come back to Decius to get the resin without stealing it. But that's too annoying, right? Stealing is much easier. I have a better idea. How much would it cost to buy your freedom? A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelius set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, 
I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. So in this timeline, yeah, he might be gone already, but we might be able to figure out how to um, stop him next time. Perhaps I can help him too? I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are or why you seem so determined to help me, but thank you. Um, I'll see what I can do. All right, but please don't take too long. What's your story? You mean my life story? Oh, well, I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three older sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. Hmm. It was a good life for a while. Until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan. But they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless, and it claimed everything, and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee for the Tiber, with the crowds. I remember diving into the river, and then... The next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. Again, it's all about the river. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. But to be honest, sometimes I think dying in that fire might have been a blessing, given what's happened since. I understand. I wonder if Yulia could be... Does she like women? Earlier she was saying that she wasn't cut up for that uh, finding a good husband lifestyle. That could mean a lot of things, but it could also mean that. <laughs> Do you know a way out of here? If that's your idea of a sorry, joke, sorry, it's sorry. not funny. Go away. Okay, that we can't just click on everything. I thought she wouldn't have liked that, but... I know what kind oh. of person you are. Leave me alone. Maybe we can talk next time. So sorry, that was very insensitive of me to ask. Uh, weirdo's gone. Okay. So looking back in our quest list here, first of all. Inventory. We have one coin, a flashlight. Al's stone. Yeah, Al gave up. He tried to help the people here, he couldn't, he gave up and offed himself, is what it seems like. Centilla's diary, the resin. We, oh, we still have it. Zipline handlebar. Old scroll. Yeah, someone is trying to say that the golden rule might not be real, but they died, so it's probably real. Okay. Maybe let's just walk around a little bit. Not sure if I want to talk to this guy again. Yeah, that guy. A circular loaf of bread. It's freely available to anyone who wants it. Thank you. I'll have all of it. <laughs> I'll leave one for people. A Roman recipe for bread. Ingredients. Generous pinch of yeast, a pinch of salt, two and a half cups of warm water, one pound of flour. Okay. Nothing off to me, but maybe there's a secret code in here. I don't know. If we ever need a recipe, we'll come back here. Mill. A stone mill. Looks like the flour and grain are poured in from above and ground between the stones as the handles are rotated. Kind of a narrow space here. Yeah, so last time we broke the golden rule by stealing. So we know stealing is a, is a sin. This time, maybe we'll just sit around for as long as we can and see who breaks the golden rule. I would have to be in the right place at the right time, but we'll see. one of these statues is worth on the outside. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. <laughs> Do you know a way out of here? I'm afraid not. 
If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but <laughs> I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. <laughs> the pot calling the kettle black. Really? I hadn't noticed. Oh yeah, gotta watch <laughs> out. Old Dacius has got your back though. What do you think about the golden rule? It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. At least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but what I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Hasn't the Magistrate banned weapons? Oh, well, technically yes, but that just means you'll need to be a little discreet. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Thank you, friend. Who are you going to vote for? Maliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. What hope does he have of protecting us? Well, you make it sound like Santilla's dead, but she just escaped. Maybe she's happy right now. Oh, I can convince him. From our very short conversation with Sentius, he does seem like a pretty okay guy. Except for the part where he didn't let Yulia break her labor contract because she signed her life away. I'd like you to vote for Sentius. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Okay, I'll be going now. Very well. Another time. Yeah. We have a bunch of things that we can focus on. But I think it's okay that for now we just maybe walk around a little bit. Find a way into the palace. Find a bow. Figure out a treatment for rheumatism. We need to speak to Navia, who is in the palace. Or find the solution myself. Okay. Sentius did give me permission to look around. No, it's locked. <laughs> a shopping list. He gave me permission to look around and enter people's private residences, but maybe not the villa, the palace. Things to buy once I've escaped. A villa on Aventine Rome, two horse chariot, seat on the Senate, four horse chariot, villa on the Bay of Naples, ten horse chariot, twelve slave girls, pale and plump. Wow. This is not the kind of shopping list I had in mind. Minerva. Roman goddess of strategy. He watches through their eyes. Who? Well, this guy just lets... Yeah, they're looking at me. I think they're trying to help, though. They see what I'm doing, and they want me to um, help them all out. If possible. Yeah. Wonder how much one of these statues is worth on the outside. It's not possible to do something without someone seeing here. This is the market square. Pekitor, sinner. Virgil. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. I hear we have you to thank for saving Julia's life. I'm glad you arrived when you did. Hmm. I... What's your story? Well, I'm an architect. Or at least I was back in Rome. That's probably too grandiose a term to describe what I do here. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. That kind of thing. But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. Is this a German accent? You're not from around here. Hm. Tell me about the city's history. I'm actually an archaeologist, so I, I would be interested. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines, they constructed hundreds of years ago. Which means Romans have been arriving here for at least that long. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The oldest shrine in this avenue isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. What does that mean? I'm not sure. It could mean that the Romans who first started building here were just copying Greek architecture. Uh, which they do all the time. Or it could mean 
Set there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? And could it be far older than any of us imagine? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. The stories they could tell. Hmm, if only, huh, the golden statues? Tell me about the city's architecture. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts. Those series of adjoining arches. They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering, with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distribute it all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. Some of it flows down into another cistern beneath the villas, and the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, where it fills the lake and allows us to fish and farm. If they bring water into the city, could we use them to escape? Hey, not so loud. Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please try to be a bit more discreet about it. We all came here via water. So that does make sense that we could escape via water. Tell me about the temple up on the bluff. You mean the great temple? This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way to keep its purpose a mystery. You see, usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like Proserpina or Diana or Apollo. Usually, that god is obvious. But in this case, it's unknown. There's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god, but it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the Temple of Saturn in Rome. And that contains the treasury. So Thanks we're for the all wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. Hmm, let's talk about something else. Of course. Do you know a way out of here? You wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. But I tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, knowing that a single slip-up could cost you everything, <laughs> it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. What do you mean? Oh, I just mean I grew up in the Batavi tribe, far to the north in Novio Magus, and learned to expect a bit of hostility. They weren't nearly as tolerant as the Romans. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Some people say it's divine, the work of a god, but I'm not so sure. It just seems so flawed to me, like it's distinctly human. I mean, hmm. once you've been here long enough, you'll notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called God doesn't seem to care, which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown God doesn't. And I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? Hmm, I'm not sure. Fair enough. That's a very good point to make though, yeah, because what is the point of the golden rule? On paper, it sounds like it's meant for everyone to live in a paradise and nobody will be wronged, but clearly, very clearly, just having been here for an hour or so, we know that that's not the case. I noticed the graffiti. Why does someone think you're a sinner? Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my preference for male company. I see. And when you grow up in the north as I did, in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away 
to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for, what was it, nearly 10 years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. I'm sorry to hear... Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. Yeah. It seems I was wrong. Didn't Sentius berate me for saying that they were not enlightened because he was all like, Oh, we don't discriminate anybody based on age or race or sex or uh, sexual preference, blah 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 blah. Who's being homophobic here? Who's a homophobic Roman? Do you know who's writing the graffiti? Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. Cultists? Strange bunch. They insist there's only one God, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is, if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. Hmm, let me look into it for you. What? Really? I... I didn't expect that. But thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are. Or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. Maybe they're in the closet, but very, very deep inside. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Who are you going to vote for? Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. Anything I can do to change that? My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. I seem to be intent on changing everyone's votes already. It would certainly make things easier, because Maliolis, we don't know what he's going to do. But if he wants to gain power here, I'm guessing he's not the one who wants to break the golden rule, because... If he wants power, then what's the point? Like, what's the point of wanting it now? Nice to talk to you. Huh, so this is, this might have been something that we can only learn because we're an archaeologist, because otherwise we wouldn't know what this word means. Sinner. Accusatory note. Sometimes I stare at the great temple on the bluff, and I think, whatever is in there... <laughs> it has to be important. Mm, be careful of your hands. Virgil, do you really want to be responsible for the sin that destroys us all? How would people even know? Roman anvil. It looks odd without a horn, but that must be a more modern innovation. Maybe we should tell them about it right now to improve their technologies. A Roman fire shovel made of bronze smells like ash. Make sure you stay away from that empty shrine. It's going to collapse at any moment. This guy's the local blacksmith. This area is private. Please leave. Oh, I'm so sorry. He has a chest there. Okay. We can ask people about the cultists. Greetings and salutations. Salve. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. The tailor. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India. And never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. 
Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? I'm from beyond the edge of the known world. Then you are an explorer like me. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? You seem a little bit too helpful. <laughs> What's your story? My story? How kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forum. Why set up a tailor shop here? You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the golden rule and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? Mm, it does seem kind of unnecessary. I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the golden rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? Yeah, you wouldn't want to get turned into a golden statue while you're in rags. <laughs> I suppose so. Oh, and there is another reason too. If we all end up as golden statues for future generations to marvel at, I don't know <laughs> about you, but I would like to look my best. <laughs> We're on the same channel, my man. How did you end up here? A good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Something something Riverbank? Why don't you tell me what you do remember? Hmm, I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares, and droning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. So you floated down the Tiber? Indeed. I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. Hmm... I can't be the only person who's come from the present. Everybody floated down a riverbank. They can't all be from this time. Does this guy have a Russian accent? Anything you like. I'm not really that good with accents. I don't know. Do you know a way out of here? Shh! Not so loud! What are you playing at? Uh, uh, sorry, did I say the wrong thing? Have you not been told about the last attempt? No. The last attempt? Oh. Then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. <laughs> it's not like I'm going anywhere. Aha, you are witty. I like that. Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is, how do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through mm. the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high, but if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. Why hasn't anyone done that yet? They have. I am getting to that. Oh, sorry. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice shake the entire city. And that, tragically, is where their tale ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. 
Hmm, this god really doesn't sound that benevolent then. Why would escaping even be a sin? Escaping, I want the choice of living wherever I want to. That's not a sin. Got it, thanks. What do you think about the golden rule? Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. You're Greek. Why do you say that? Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of Earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. Yeah, but you never got turned into a statue immediately after breaking the rule, right? What can we do about it? If we are to survive, I say we must each heed the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, Avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. Easier said than done. Regrettably, I think you are correct, my friend. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. It was honestly amazing that you guys have been here for seven months. That's a long time. <sighs> I know, I've seen it happen. Ah, the voice of experience. I am <laughs> sorry for your loss, my I'm friend. I'm the one who stole. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the golden rule. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing. Do they not? <laughs> Does anybody not notice their faces, their heads moving? Who are you gonna vote for? That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleolus. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. Hmm, they're being threatened. Anything I can do to change that? Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. Any idea who's threatening Virgil? This is troubling, is it not? I'm afraid I have no idea. It is ridiculous though, Virgil is a fine man. But my young friend Fabia confided in me that she saw someone leaving graffiti on his shop front last night. Perhaps you should ask her about it. Fabia. Okay, thank you. I'll be going now. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. He seems friendly enough. I kinda like him. I thought it was getting dark, but it's just us being in a cave, that's all. Do you mind if I go in the back of your... Collection of dyes for coloring clothing, extracted from plants and insects. Oh. No, 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 we can't. We already know it's a sin. Look, there's people right here staring, so it's not possible for me to do this without them realizing. These statues are placed very carefully in specific positions. However, if we did need money, could we just go around grabbing all of it and then do whatever we wanted to do with it? People get scared though, they don't interact with you anymore. Greetings and salutations. Yeah. Hello there. Isn't the great temple majestic? A new face. Ave and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Hi, I'm Walensius. What's your story? Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? Sorry, what should I have done? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. 
and then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. <laughs> Just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. Okay, so you're important around here. What is a Vestal Priestess? You really don't know? You are from far away, aren't you? Well, I am one of the priestesses charged with keeping the sacred flame in Rome's shrine of Vesta burning. I take it you know who Vesta is? <laughs> Remind me? Vesta is the mother goddess of hearth and home, and the guardian of the Roman people. How did you end up here? You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? A Karen told me to go check out the ruins and the next thing I knew, I'm here. <laughs> a young woman named Karen dragged me out of a river, unconscious, and sent me here. Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed... odd to you? It's a common name where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, it's not a Roman name. It carries negative connotations where I'm from. Why is that? Because of the memes. The memes? <laughs> what are the memes? A meme is a small image you share with other people. They've become a bit like their own language. So, a bit like Egyptian hieroglyphs then? <laughs> Don't you just love springtime? Oh god, who was that? Somebody just walked past us. A meme is an actual word, it's just that the internet ruined it. Uh, something like that. So your people make hieroglyphics depicting this accursed character. The one they call <laughs> Karen. Hmm. I wonder if... No. Oh god, no. Are you gonna tell me that Karen is some evil god? What were you gonna say? I apologize. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Wait, okay, we know the, the river thing is already a constant, but is a woman having a Karen around, is that a constant? I remember Decius talked about having to give up a woman or the cart, and then he chose the cart and just left the woman to die. Huh. Hey, you're being a bit coy. I know, I know. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you, too. I may have already noticed the pattern. You have? Then what is it? Some people mentioned a river. Yes. I understand many of our friends were carried here by a river current. What else? Some people mentioned a coin. Oh. Yes. I suppose that could be something. But then most of us do tend to carry coins on our person, don't we? What else? Some people mentioned memory lapses. That's true. I know I wasn't entirely sure how I wound up here. It's as I feared. I think I understand what poor Livia has been going through. You mentioned earlier you met a young woman in the forest named Karen, yes? That's right. I see. And was this Karen by any chance wearing a hood? She was wearing a hoodie. How could you have known that? She doesn't know what a hoodie is. Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. I think you'd better follow me to the baths. All right, I'll meet you in the baths. But don't follow too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. Hey, hey. why not? 